I'm delighted to be with you here, it's Mentor Tay, and I want to talk to you about what it takes and how you can start to create wealth for yourself, but the level of wealth that you want. Now to make things very easy, I'm going to use some numbers, I'm going to talk about some numbers and I'm going to use these numbers not particularly to set a goal for you, to set a target for you. I'm using it as a point of reference. Now you can alter the numbers and you can use the numbers as you please based on your personal circumstances. Now what is wealth? Now by wealth, I'm really gonna be talking about financial wealth, which is the material level of wealth. And this is simply getting to a point where you have enough um, financial means to live the lifestyle that you want. And in many cases, whereby you're free, and by free I'm talking about financial freedom, where you live from a place of abundance and generosity as opposed to security and fear. And to get to this place, it means that you must have investment assets that pay you an income. And the income must be enough that it covers your expenses and your cost of living. And it maintains the lifestyle that you want without you having to work. But you can still choose to because you want to work for fun and joy. But this means that you can afford to do nothing and money still comes into your life on a daily, monthly, yearly basis. And that meets your um, monthly expenses, yearly expenses and your lifestyle. We all want to be successful. Um, if you say that you don't, then I think number one, you're lying to yourself. But also number two, it's not natural. And I said it's not natural simply because um, everything created by life has an expression and part of that expression means that it has to grow everything created in life has to grow and the need to have more is something that is innate it's something you should embrace um, it's not something you should be ashamed of and I say it's not natural also because I think genuinely we're all loving and we're all caring and to say you don't want to be wealthy, to say you don't want any money, to say you don't want anything means that you don't want to help people. And if you have a desire and you have love in you, then one of the very basic proofs of love is that love has to give. Love has to love. And it's expressed in many cases through giving. And so one of the key reasons and uh, fundamental reasons why you should want to be wealthy is just so you can see how many people you can help. Um, I, I like look back at my life and I know that who I am today is really a reflection of all the support I received from all the people who invested in me. People who invested time, money, effort, emotions, love, presence, but people invested in me. And I can monetize all of those investments and I would say that I am a product of people's investments and similarly um, because of their care and their love for me I am who I am today and therefore not only is there an obligation on my part and a responsibility but I think it's also a duty on my part to find people that I can help people who I can help make their dreams a reality in however I can now I want to talk about what it takes to become wealthy and I'm going to use the word millionaire as a basis for my discussion. Before I use the word millionaire, let me make it very clear that I'm not attracted to that word. Um, it's a word that we so many times hear on the television, you know, who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to date a millionaire? Who wants to marry a millionaire? Who wants to meet the millionaire's mother? Um, it's all about millionaire. Um, how to become a millionaire and it's become so cliched in my opinion that it's kept people from dreaming big dreams so I don't like the word millionaire I do however recognize that it's simply a means of measuring your financial position as a matter of fact I also think that it's 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 a stopping point along your journey to riches and wealth but most people have held on to that picture of a millionaire and it stopped them from using their creativity and using their mind. And so millionaire has now become what I call the new middle class. Middle class in how you think, but also middle class in what you're worth. As a matter of fact, if, if you, all you're focusing on is becoming a millionaire 
on winning the million here, but I want to say to you, and I hope this comes across really nicely, but I want to say to you that if you're thinking about a millionaire status, that that's the new poor. You've got to think beyond that. You've got to start thinking about becoming a decamillionaire. You've got to think about becoming a multi multi millionaire, perhaps becoming a billionaire. Part of that is simply because the cost of living is rising. And what would have been sufficient to care for you 10 years ago wouldn't be sufficient to even feed you for a few days. So don't get too hung up with the word millionaire. I'm going to use it as a way of measuring what we're trying to deal with here. Now, what is a million? Now, we understand a million in terms of numbers, so that is easy. If you want to become wealthy, you must understand that wealth is a function of time. Wealth is created by the investment of your time. The only area in life where we have equality is in time. Now, I'll say that again. The only area in life where we have equality is in time. We all get 24 hours every day. None of us is equal in any way other than within time. We have a different purpose. We have a different assignment in life. We have different skills, gifts. We have different um, ways of living. We're all different. But how we use our time decides how well we maximize our potential. We all have the ability and access to unlimited potentiality, but what we will achieve will be different based on how we use time. So wealth and riches begins with the understanding of time. Now I'm going to start from the very basics by saying two words. Number one, there are two ways of making money and creating wealth. The first is where you have people like yourself and me, where we work for money. We exchange our time, our energy, our efforts, our intelligence, our presence for money. In this case, what we are is that we are what I call slaves to money because we're working for money. The second way is where we have money working for money, for us. This is whereby you take a portion of what you have, you put it to work. It starts to create more wealth for you. And it gets to a point where you no longer have to exchange your time for money and the money simply continues to work for you. But that is where wealth and true wealth is created. And the shortest pathway to that is through the process of what I call multiple sources of income. Very simple, but it simply means that you have a golden goose that lays the eggs. You take the eggs, you don't eat it, you protect the eggs. You lay more gooses, you have now a few geese, they produce more eggs, and the more they do that, the more you find your wealth starts to increase. But to begin, you have to start with time. Recognize that you have 24 hours every day. And so every day, what you do with your time decides who you become. Now, every day is split into two parts. We have what we call the waking day, and we have the resting day. Some people call it night and day. And during the waking day, the average adult spends about eight hours working, working for money. This means that in a week, we do about 40 hours every week. Now understand something, that on average, we work about 50 working weeks. On average, we work 50 working weeks every year. 50 working weeks based on 40 working hours means that every year we're working for about 2,000 hours on average, on average. Now, if your goal is to become a millionaire, this means that every year you want to earn a million. I think that's a good goal to set for yourself. Not that you want to become your net, you, not that you want your net worth to become um, 1 million. In this case, you're saying, I want to be able to earn 1 million every year. I'm going to, for the sake of this explanation, ex ex um, assume that what we're dealing with is net income, not gross income. Because if you're earning a million, um, you probably will be spending about 50% in total of that in taxes. And in the UK, um, we have a taxation system that is it's a, it's a scaled system. Um, but you will be paying, if you were to add all of your, your national 
contribution, if you were to add your taxes, if you were then also to add your the taxes you pay for all purchases, you'd be spending um, about 50%. Because on average, we spend about 5% of our net income on taxes associated with purchases. And most people don't think about that. So if you were making a, a million gross income, you'd only be going back with roughly about 500,000 or less. So the key I'm talking about here is net income, which is a million. Now to earn a million pounds every year, you simply have to do this, the basic, this is how wealth begins. You have to start with the basic process of understanding what the value of your time is. If you want to earn a million net and you have 2,000 hours, then it simply means that if you divide 1 million by 2,000 hours, what you then have is 500 pounds per hour. This means that to become worthy of having a net income of 500 pounds an hour, you must, you must use your time. Every hour must be used in such a way that during that period, that hour is generating 500 pounds worth of value. Now understand something. The how we create wealth is automatic. And by automatic, I simply mean that you don't focus on receiving. Receiving is automatic. Giving is what you have to do. You don't focus on receiving, you focus on giving. By this, I simply mean if your focus is on how can I get 500 pounds, you're simply becoming what I call a parasite because you're always looking for something to take from other people. On the other hand, if your focus is how can I create value for people that is worth more than 500 pounds, that they will consider worth more than 500 pounds and they will be happy to part way with 500 pounds. Now you're focusing on giving, which means the more you give, the more you receive. And part of the way you do this is finding problems to solve. It's not about thinking about ideas. Ideas don't make you wealthy. Applied ideas that solve problems for people is what creates wealth. You have to think about problems to solve. How can I solve problems for people and in the process add value to them? So let's start by saying the first thing you must do if you want to have a net income of a million every year is you must start to use your time as though each hour was worth 500 pounds. By doing this, what you find, depending on where you are right now, I don't know who you are, I don't know where you are financially, you might find that there's a huge contrast between what you earn right now and what you want to earn. I like what um, Earl Nightingale, I like what Earl Nightingale says when he defines success, right? I like how he defines success. And he says success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal. And if someone understands where they are and they understand where they're trying to get to and they're moving in the direction of their goal, then they're successful. So what I've done for you is I've painted a picture of your destination. Your destination is 500 pounds every hour. Your responsibility is to make me aware or make yourself aware about where you are self-awareness now i'm going to assume to make this process smooth i'm also going to make an assumption based on where you are i would assume that what you earn and this is an assumption i'm not saying it's entirely correct i would assume that every year let's assume that what you earn right now is fifty thousand pounds every year fifty thousand nets every year now, if you earn 50,000 net every year, assuming 2,000 work hours, that means you earn 25 pounds every hour. That is your worth. That is the value that you're creating. To move from 25 to 500 is a massive jump, but it's also a very simple jump. When most people think about creating wealth, they're looking at what they have to do. That's the wrong thing. They're looking at what they have to do. So if they look at 25 and they look at 500, and most people say it's impossible. And that attitude means that they automatically become less creative. 
question should always be, how can I do it? You see, because questions hold all the secrets, all the secrets to life. If you ask an empowering question, you will get the answers. If you ask a disempowering question, you'll get a response. Creativity is what your mind is for. So whenever you find yourself in a challenging situation, change the question whereby you're empowering the mind by asking the question, how can I do this? What you're doing is you're activating the creativity in you and the mind can go to work to find answers for you. Rather than focus on what you have to do between 25 and 500 pounds an hour, focus on who you have to be. And this is the key. The secret is who you become, not what you do. To become someone of value, in this case 500, it means that you have to start doing things of that level to become someone of that value. This means that in your day-to-day -day life, if there are activities you do every day that is worth um, 25 pounds every hour, you have to stop doing those. You have to stop doing everything that pays anything less than 500 pounds an hour. You have to start thinking about ideas, solving problems worth 500 pounds every hour. It's a must. If you're thinking about incrementally increasing your salary to 500 pounds, it may never happen. On the other hand, if you change your self-image, if you change the portrait you have about yourself, if you start to see yourself in your subconscious mind as someone worth 500 pounds an hour, then what you'll find is you start to act like someone worth 500 pounds an hour. Now, one of the best recommendations I can give you is you have to start doing less administrative tasks. We're talking about the office, but you see, what makes the wealthy wealthy are their habits and their lifestyle. And this doesn't stop at work, it comes into the work and the home. This means that you have to stop doing all the, maybe the chores you would normally do. Um, some people say, well, I like to hoover the house, I like to clean. Um, the truth of the matter is that you will probably never find a millionaire or a billionaire who cleans or who loves to clean their house. Now, let me qualify that by saying this, that there might be some people who just love and they use that as a way of escapism, maybe as a way of de-stressing, that's different. In this case, they're not doing it for necessity, they're doing it because they enjoy it. In your case, if you're doing your activities and you're not at the level you want to be financially, then it means you have to stop yourself from doing it until you've started creating multiple sources of income and now you're no longer working for money, money's working for you and you have the time. If you are earning 25 pounds every hour, you have to stop doing everything that is 25 pounds or less, but you also have to stop doing anything that is 500 pounds or less. You have to delegate it. You have to start thinking and living the lifestyle of a millionaire. The more you live that life, the more you start to fill your mind with the beliefs, the philosophies, the attitude, the thinking pattern, the habits, what you find is that you start to change. Your character starts to change. Your attitude starts to change. Your behavior changes. And when you have those three changes, your results in life start to change. What you find is that even in during your spare time, when you pick up a book to read, and one of the questions you might find yourself asking yourself is, can I extract in one hour can I extract something worth more than 500 pounds from this book? It's very powerful, very simple, but it starts to change your mindset. You see, the mindset change is what leads to wealth. You have to change your mind and you have to keep renewing your mind even when you've changed it. So let me summarize by saying this. You get to choose the level of wealth you want. If you want 10 million pounds every year, net then simply what you have to do is say, well, I have to earn 5,000 pounds every hour. And that means that you have to start using your time on that basis. And the key here is not what do I do? Who do I become? And by becoming that person, can I solve problems for people worth more than 5,000 pounds an hour for them to recognize and agree that the value 
is worth more than that and they're then willing to compensate me for my time. Everything comes down to how you use time. You see, if I looked at you and I sat with you for a few minutes, I could see how you spend your time just by observation, maybe through interaction, through discussion. And how you use your time and how you've used your time up until today has already decided who you will be tomorrow. So to change your future, start by changing your habits. And part of the way you change your habits is change how you use your time. You change your time, you change your life.